Alrighty guys, hello and welcome back to the show. Today we're going into the regeneration aura um, on the Seraphim ACU for a couple different reasons. A, I didn't really know the ins and outs of it myself. I knew it existed, but I didn't know a ton about it. B, it was suggested in the comment section for a cast I did recently that heavily featured it. I'll link that cast below if you guys didn't see it. And lastly, I kind of wanted to see how effective it actually is because it looked pretty damn good in that cast. But I'm going to try and quantify exactly how good it is in this video. Okay, so let's explain what this is and how it works and how the different values are calculated. Now, regen aura is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's an aura that is around the ACU that provides regeneration and a mild health bonus for any unit within its radius. This is an upgrade for the left arm on the ACU. So going for this upgrade means that you're sacrificing either the T2 T slash T3 engineering upgrade or the gun slash upgrade. So just keep that in mind while you're deciding whether or not to upgrade for this, uh, for the region or not. So how does it work? It essentially works on a multiplier of the unit's max health with a ceiling adjusted at each health attack level and a floor that remains constant. So we'll explain what this means. But the reason for this is to mitigate uh, some units that have really high HP at tech one. So like frigates, for example, with 2000 HP and units that have really, uh, that would only have a regen rate of like 0.7 HP per second, uh, which uh, would be like the tech one scout. I don't know why you're healing scouts, but anyway, that the floor exists and I'm putting the values on the screen, which are linked in the GitHub. So. For example, a Tham will regen with the basic restoration field upgrade at five hit points per second because the value applied in the basic HP uh, in the basic region aura is 0 0.02. Uh, that is the multiplier of the unit's max health. So 0 0.02 times 280 is 5.6. The engine rounds it down to five. However, a frigate only regens at 10 HP per second, even though 0 0.02 times 2000 is 40. This is because 40 is higher than the ceiling for tech one of 10. So it gets limited to 10 HP per second. And what I'm, so you can see the caps at the various tech levels and the floor. Uh, all this, like I said earlier, is on the Forge Alliance Forever GitHub. Uh, by the way, if y'all are curious, um, I found out recently there's apparently not a ton of people that know that pretty much all of the code for Forge Alliance Forever as far as the scripts and unit blueprints are open source. So I'll also link the FAF GitHub down below, uh, which goes in far more detail than the unit database linked in the client on the way different units work. It's especially useful for like commander upgrades and support commander upgrades because the unit database linked in the client does not go in depth into those values. So the Forge Alliance Forever GitHub is really helpful if you're looking uh, for exactly uh, what, an, uh, what an upgrade does for your ACU. A um, couple of other things to mention, uh, there is also a health increase of 10% uh, for the basic upgrade. This goes up to 20% with the advanced restoration field upgrade. The radius is 30, increasing to 35 with the advanced restoration field. Um, putting up a visualization of what that radius actually looks like because 30 is kind of an arbitrary number. Uh, but the way that the engine calculates one unit is essentially a wall section. So one wall section, it has a radius of one. So 30, a radius of 30 would be 30 wall sections. Uh, there's also a moderate increase to commander health and regen rate as well, but that's really not the reason why you're going for this upgrade. So if you're looking to make your comm beefier, get nano. Um, and it's a pretty good combination. Uh, the cost, the basic restoration field costs are 700 mass, 18,000 energy with a build time of 700. Uh, the advanced restoration field costs 1,800 mass, 42,000 energy with a build time of 1,500. So that's it for the easy stuff. Uh, now we get into actually testing this. Uh, 1v1, this is pretty easy to test. Uh, we're only going to be, we're going to be using only Seraphim destroyers in this test because the Seraphims are the one, Seraphim are the ones with the regen aura. So we're gonna be measuring how much of a difference it makes. And the destroyer is gonna be kind of our proof of concept here. Instead of going in depth into every single unit, a lot of this is going to carry over to like the battleship. It's gonna carry over to land units, etc. So the destroyer, uh, 
graced with the presence of the quote unquote underwater medic. Uh, whenever it is used with the basic regen aura, survives with about 1,389 uh, HP out of the 7,590 7, uh, with the regen aura. Without the regen aura, Seraphim Destroyer only has 6,900 HP. Very nice. Uh, without the regen bonus. So, um, there's a bunch of different ways that you could look at how this how this upgrade translates to mass, e mass efficiency, and I'm going to list all of them down below because, uh, candidly, I'm not sure which one is which one would be the best way to look at it, or if all of them are right. Um, so I'm going to list all of them down below. Me personally, I believe it's kind of a mixture of all three of these, um, but I'm going to list all of them. I'm going to go ahead and list all of the ways that you could look at this. So. The first thing that we could say is that the regen aura for a 700 mass investment saves you 2,250 mass because that is the cost of the Seraphim T2 destroyer. And that's because the destroyer won, it survived, and it will eventually heal up to max health. This is probably the most basic way to look at it. Now, the second way you could look at it is that it saves you 453 mass when we're rounding here, because that's the mass value of the HP that this Seraphim de Destroyer survived with. The way you get this calculation is uh, you take um, HP and divide it by the total mass invested. That gives you a rough uh, mass per, per hit point metric. And then you multiply that by how much HP it actually survived with, and you come out with 453 mass. So for one Seraphim Destroyer, just having a Seraphim Regen Aura saves us 453 mass. Now, the last way we could look at this is that the Regen Aura makes the Seraphim Destroyer 20% more efficient uh, for the HP because of the amount of HP that it survived with, again, divided by the total HP pool of a Destroyer without the Regen Aura. So either way, you, any way you look at this, it, it's obviously an upgrade. Um, and I believe that it's kind of a mixture of all of these where you could definitely make the case that you know, it saved this destroyer and it saved the entire mass value of the destroyer because the destroyer is eventually going to heal um, in the and that would be a kind of a long term uh, way of looking at it. So like if you're really bullish in the stock market, that'd be a really long term investment. Uh, if you're looking for more of a short term investment, I think you look at it in the second way, which is that it, it saves you 453 mass because that is the value of the hit points that the destroyer survived with in the moment. And then again, another long term way of looking at it is that it makes it 20 percent more efficient. So all that has been done with the basic regen field. Now, if we upgrade to the advanced regen field, uh, which is what we saw in that cast, uh, that's going to change the numbers, obviously. Uh, upgrading to the advanced regen upgrade gives, gives us a destroyer that survives a one-on-one -on -one engagement with another destroyer, and it survives with 3,472 HP remaining on this destroyer boosted by the regen aura. All the calculations that we ran previously still apply on how this looks, um, but for the 1800, 1800 mass investment for the advanced regen or if you're getting again a fully healed destroyer saving 2250 uh, 250 mass again the most simplistic way of looking at it a huge increase on the hit points uh, on the hit point per mass invested going from 453 to 1132 this is rounded and that would be you're saving 1132 mass instantly because of the surviving hp or its overall HP efficiency increases by roughly 50%. Now, again, I think that all three of these ways you look at it are pretty compelling for this upgrade. Um, now, the elephant in the room here is that I'm doing 1v1 comparisons. And the reason why I'm doing one versus one on this destroyers is because there's a lot of variables that come into play that come into play that are really difficult to control for whenever you're doing 5v5, 10v10, et cetera, tests. Uh, the biggest one being that the AI sometimes does things that are relatively inconsistent with targeting. Sometimes it will focus down one destroyer and other times it will spread a 5v5 matchup into five 1v1 matchups. So because that can't 100% be controlled for, we're gonna be taking the 1v1 matchup and then kind of extrapolating extrapolating from there, which is, I believe, the best way to look at it. Uh, the 
way that we can look at this in the real world though is go back to that cast and actually take a and actually look at how many destroyers were built by both sides in the cast whenever the advanced regen aura was employed by i make war on you um, and then we can look at um how beneficial it was so going back to going back to that cast i make war on you was the player that had upgraded for the advanced region aura and he had 12 destroyers when the commanding when the commander started getting involved in the naval battle uh, there were also eight sub hunters from terminal that would also benefit from the region aura so right off the bat we have a 20 percent uh, flat increase to max health for all of the units and also giving bonus healing of about 50 HP per second. So purely based on the increase to max HP before anyone has fired a shot, I make war on used destroyer flotilla has an extra 16,560 HP to work with. Effectively meaning that he has an additional 2.4 destroyers worth of HP out there. Now remember, a destroyer costs 2,250 mass, and the regen aura costs 1800 mass. So we're already getting huge value out of this upgrade before anybody has even fired a shot. And after the fighting starts, the Salem's that I make war on you and terminal were up against have about 230 damage per second against above water units, frigates, frigates destroyers, cruisers, etc. cetera. Um, so with the HP per second regen that regen aura gives you're not only getting an additional 2.4 destroyers worth of HP uh, just by existing but you're also effectively cutting the enemy's damage by a little over 20 percent now in the engagement they had were facing off against nine destroyers with some supporting frigates from the opposing team and during this initial engagement, which is what I kind of mapped out, they ended up killing eight destroyers while only losing four destroyers of their own, at least as far as I could tell. The replay ID is uh, linked in that cast if anyone wants to check me. And without regen aura, I'm sure that I make war on you still would have won because you're, you're 12 versus nine. Um, but I don't believe it would have been anywhere near as devastating uh, as it was for the opposing team. And uh, as a bonus, any damaged destroyers that came out of that engagement are going to heal up and be back to full HP in the matter of a couple in a matter of a couple of minutes while the opposing team has to completely manufacture entirely new destroyers, meaning that they are not only behind the eight ball right now, but because Navy is so much about getting critical mass and being able to just push gradually forward, getting the reclaim back behind you, etc. It means that because of this advanced region aura, it just immediately made I make war on you's death all that much more damaging. And we saw how it developed kind of in that cast. So next we'll talk about another elephant in the room, which is I've been talking exclusively about Navy in that video. And there's, there's a couple of different reasons for that. Uh, first that there was a cast, that I did showcasing this tech. I've talked about that a lot. Um, and B, uh, the second one is, um, I don't think anybody should upgrade this for land uh, without upgrading a couple of other things first, like gun. And additionally, if you're playing land, then uh, T2, I think does have a compelling use case for you. So it's not as cut and dry on whether or not you should go for advanced regen aura. While on Navy, uh, the Seraphim don't really have a way to utilize the commander super efficiently uh, for naval battles and except for for advanced restoration field. And I think that this is, you know, essentially essentially a go to no brainer move uh, for anybody that wants to utilize their commander to boost their overall naval power if they're playing Seraphim. So next we get to the kind of question, should you do this? And whether you should do this or not is, I think, heavily dependent on your ability to micro your commander and gauge the risk of getting sniped by torps, gunships, strats, or just forgetting that he's forward and getting taken out by subs or destroyers. Because and the reason why that's easy to do is whenever you drag a box to select all of your naval units to retreat, if you're losing an engagement, that box won't select your commander. So there's uh probably there's probably a mod out there that fixes that i don't know if you know of it link it in the comments down below but if you're retreating from a naval engagement and just drag a quick box and click everybody have everybody fall back 
uh, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to forget about your commander out there unless you're doing the unless you you know have a pretty high mental capacity, which I don't. So doing this for Navy or for land, honestly, is a high risk, high reward play. And we actually saw that in the cast where even a pretty high level player utilizing this strategy ended up getting caught out, even though he had essentially won Navy for the Southern team. So I'm painting in broad strokes here on my recommendation, uh, my recommendations here, um, even though it's not necessarily a perfect system. But if whenever it comes down to it, if you're less experienced player, I'd highly recommend you get the fundamentals of Navy or land combat down before you look at this tech. Focus on developing things like upgrading to gun or managing mass cost against your naval production. Uh, these are things that I obviously struggle with hugely as well. But if you are a higher rated player and have a lot of the fundamentals locked down and you're really confident in, the, in your ability to manage the risks that this tech introduces, I believe that this uh, deserves a serious look as a possible comm upgrade, especially uh, in Navy centric engagements. Alrighty guys, well, that's it for me today. Uh, as obvious as always, let me know down in the comments section uh, what you guys think about this. I'm, you guys aren't shy. Um, I'm sure that there are a couple things that I missed, but the goal here was really to just uh, take a look at this upgrade, quantify it as best as we could, and see exactly how useful it is. And I think that it's pretty darn useful. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. Um, and as always, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.